this point in time, I'd like to call this meeting of the Middlesex County Board of Chosen Freeholders to order. Please rise for a moment of silence. Dennis, salute the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Margaret. Notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4 10 has been complied with. It shall be entered into the minutes of this meeting. Roll call. Freeholder Barrett Vellante. Freeholder Delina. Freeholder Polos? Here. Freeholder Rios? Here. Freeholder Tamaro? Here. Freeholder Valenti? Here. Freeholder Director Rafano? Here. Proclamations. We have one proclamation this evening recognizing May 11, 2012 as Provider Appreciation Day in Middlesex County. I believe that's going to be presented by Freeholder Valente. Yes. Um, is Mary Jane DiPaolo from Community Child Care Solutions here, please? Would you come forward, please? It's a pleasure and an honor to make this presentation today uh, to the National Association of Child Care Resource and referral agencies and other organizations nationwide uh, that are recognizing child care providers on this day. Whereas of the 20 million children under age five in America, nearly one, 11 million are in some form of child care setting. Whereas by calling attention to the importance of high quality child care services for all children and families within Middlesex County, we hope to improve the quality and availability of such services, and whereas our future depends on the quality of the early childhood experiences provided to young children today, high quality early child care services represent a worthy commitment to our children's future. Now, therefore, the Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Middlesex hereby proclaim May 11, 2012 as Provider Appreciation Day in Middlesex County and we call upon the citizens of the county to recognize child care providers for their important work. Thank you for your service and all you do for us. Thank you. I just wanted to say that in Middlesex County, there's over 400 child care providers serving nearly 30,000 children. And as the community uh, child care resource and referral agency, we're drawing down a significant amount of federal dollars, nearly 15 million to serve low income families in the county. And overall, child care is the fourth largest industry in the state of New Jersey. So I'd just like to thank you on behalf of the children and family in Middlesex County for appreciating the service that we provide. Thank you. Thank you. resolutions um, we have a few this evening the first is recognizing the winners of the don't drive dangerously contest in the video category first place is Monroe Township High School second place is Middlesex County Vocational and Technical High School East Brunswick campus third place is third place North Brunswick High School in the audio category first place is Middlesex County Vocational and Technical High School Perth Amboy campus second place Middlesex County Academy for Science Mathematics and Engineering Technologies and third place to the Middlesex Academy for Allied Health and Biomedical Sciences. Next is recognizing East Brunswick Police Officer Frank Sutter as he was honored by the New Jersey Division of Highway Traffic Safety for his efforts in DWI arrests. And last is recognizing Gerald Alexander Wesley of Boy Scout Troop 53 as he has attained his Eagle Scout Award. I need a motion to adopt. So moved. Second. Motion by Deputy <coughs> Director Rio, seconded by Freeholder Valente. Roll call. Freeholder Polos. Yes. Freeholder Rios? Yes. Freeholder Tamaro? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Director Rafano? Yes. Freeholder Polos, uh, you're on. Thank oh. you so much, Director.
First, I'd like to uh, thank the director and the board for going a little bit out of order to allow us to do the presentations a little earlier, allow the students uh, and so forth to be able to uh, get their accommodations from the county a little bit earlier this evening. And I also have my uh, daughter's um, spring concert tonight, so I'll be able to attend that with all <laughs> hopes. So thank you so much, director. You're welcome. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, as I announced at the last freeholder meeting, we celebrated the 13th annual uh, we, which originally started out as Don't Drink and Drive contest and became the Don't Drive Distracted, became our 3D program. Um, this has been a highly successful program that we've been doing in the county now, as I said, for 13 years. It has grown in uh, depth and in size. This year we had, uh, I believe, 14 schools and 27 entries. When we began the program 13 years ago, we just had six entries from six high schools. Over the years, the program expanded to allow Hispanic videos, uh, to allow audio tapes for public service announcements on radio, and uh, we believe that the quality of the tapes, the videos, and the entries has increased over the years. We compliment the students, um, the advisors, the schools for their participation and support. We thank our co-sponsors, including the uh, County Superintendent of Schools, the Department of Highway Traffic Safety, which provides us with the funding, the Robert Wood Johnson Injury Prevention Division, which has been a partner for many years, uh, the Middlesex County NCADD, who's also been a partner, and a couple of years ago we also uh, became partners with the Rutgers University uh, Division of Alcohol Studies. So it is a great program, uh, something wonderful that we participate in. I want to first thank Carol Burns, who's with us this evening, who helps uh, coordinate the entire event uh, from our staff, and a lot of a round of applause for Carol for doing a wonderful job. <laughs> I would ask that, um, Khalid, if we could, to just go through. We're going to present the entries tonight, uh, the audio as well as the video, and then we'll be calling up those who are here tonight uh, for a small presentation. I was one of the judges. Yes, and I was going to compliment you in a moment. It was <laughs> absolutely incredible, the work that our students did. And Frielder Valenti, I, wanna, I was going to, in a, in a moment, thank her. She has been a volunteer judge for about five, six years now, I believe, maybe longer. Yeah, before, uh, even before and, I was And uh, certainly with the uh, Hispanic entries, she's able to help us, uh, um, you know, decipher those and, and translate those. And uh, Blanquita, thank you for always putting that extra time and effort. And we really It was my it. pleasure. Was it really worth it? Losing it all. For a simple text, drink, or call. The look. The text. The drink. And the feeling. The lipstick that looked so bright made you not see the car's oncoming light. The text that made you kill caused you to drive off the hill. The drink that felt so great kept you from going straight. The motions that hurt made you skid onto the dirt. The, the forgotten, forgotten breaks resulted in your wake. wake. In 2009, 20% of injury crashes involved reports of distracted driving. Don't be another statistic to dial D for distractions. I'm so excited for prom. I can't wait to show you my dress. Oh my gosh, me too. This is gonna be great. It's gonna be the best one ever. I mean, it has to be. Yeah, I know. I need to get... <laughs> She never got to show anyone her prom dress. Her prom dress was her casket. A drunk driver took away her memories of prom. Don't drink and drive. Keep those memories alive. Bro, I'm hungry. I can't wait to eat this burger. Dude, wait till we get home, man. I know what I'm doing, bro. You don't even know how to ride a bike. Just put the burger down. Be quiet, man. Yo, give me the honey mustard. Dude, move your feet. Yo, look out! Nine one one, what's your emergency? 
In the last 10 years, 68,000 teenagers have died in car accidents. Please, don't become a statistic. Walking through the halls is different than driving a car. Sure, there are similarities. But car accidents risk lives. Me. Wait! How you're driving? Put me down, are you crazy? Texting, if it's that important, pull over or don't even bother getting in the car because at the slightest moment you can end someone's life or your own. the bubbles before you drive. As I said, you saw a, um, a mix of videos that talked about drinking and driving and distracted driving because we have expanded the program to the three Ds. We've tried to cover it all. So we're very, very proud of the uh, students. Uh, and what they were able to accomplish. Actually, all the entries were wonderful. It's always difficult to judge. I don't envy your job, Blanquita. I'm glad I'm not it one of the tough. judges. It's <laughs> difficult to do. Uh, at this time, I'd like to invite up the students who are able to be with us. And I should say that this event culminated in an all-day event at the Fire Academy. We had about 100 and 150 students from throughout the county. All of the kids who participated in the program came to an all-day seminar where it was very interactive. We had lectures, uh, hands-on training. They were able to get into our golf carts to do a uh, distracted driving initiative. So it's really a, a very educational day, and I, I think the students are very, were very uh, excited about it. So we have some of our winners here today. I will start with the second place winners in our video contest. We have here from the Middlesex County Votech in East Brunswick, Alicia Desimone, Vinny uh, Begina, Chris McCabe, Shadea Sewell, and their advisor, Alicia Miranda, and the principal, Jeff Bisco, is here. Could you all come up, please? Oh, oh, yes, I should mention, of course, our, I'd like to also ask our school superintendent, Brian Lachlan, from the uh, Botech. Brian, would you come up and join us? Thank you, Charlie. You're welcome. Gentlemen, come over <laughs> Brian should be very proud of how all of your schools did in uh, the competition this year.
we should say congratulations to the parents as well who are here tonight for the wonderful job that your, your children did. Uh, representing North Brunswick High School tonight is Peter Clark, the principal of North Brunswick. Peter? And I think, Peter, at the end we can give you resolutions for everyone. This one wish you congratulations. It's your job. Very nice job. Thank you. In our audio selections, we have our first place winners from Middlesex County Vote Tech once again, uh, David Jorge, Diego Lajura, uh, the advisor Bridget Hill, and Robert Fuller, the principal, are here. Don't go too far. We have our third place winner here as well from the uh, Academy for Allied Health and Biomedical Science. Uh, Megan Patel, Alexandra Levinsky, uh, Richa Shah, Aditi Kamat, uh, the advisor Rafael Nava, and the principal Alex Guzman are here. We were very pleased this year at our all-day festivities that we had the superintendent of our vocational system attend, Brian Lachlan. And Brian, would you like to come up and say a couple of words? Yeah, I just want to uh, thank Freeholder Polis, members of the Freeholder Board, and the sponsors of, of this event. Um, this is the first year I had the opportunity to attend. Every year our students uh, go to the program. They come back totally enthused and energized, and they, they talk about what a great experience it was. And uh, this year I wanted to go to, to, to experience it myself. And I have to say, it truly was uh, a great experience for everyone, not only the students, but everyone that was there. So I, wanna, I really want to thank the Freeholder Board for raising the awareness or providing the opportunity, really, for our students to focus on this issue, thereby raising their awareness. And the important thing for, for me is not the award, but the fact that you actually have created ambassadors. Because it's my hope uh, that these students that are here this evening and these teachers will bring the message back. We will show the videos and the audio segments to our entire school community in hopes that we can raise the awareness uh, of all of our students. And it is a very scary time of year with prom. We have a prom tomorrow night with proms and graduations. So uh, thank you, really, for, for focusing on this issue. Uh, our children are our most important asset. So uh, again, thank you. Also, as the free elder oversees this program and have, has, uh, uh, have for actually the last 13 years, I want to thank the board as well. Um, the board has always been extremely supportive with traffic <coughs> safety initiatives, educational opportunities, and clearly without their support and certainly the funding that we get from the state, these types of initiatives wouldn't be possible. So members of the board, thank you for your continued support on this important initiative. Um, a few years ago, uh, we kind of coined a phrase as we were initiating a new development in traffic safety through a new grant. Um, I started to talk about the three E's of traffic safety, education, enhancements and enforcement. Education is clear, I think it's self-defining. We certainly saw elements of that tonight in the presentations. It is what we do every day to educate the public about the importance of not driving drunk and not driving distracted. 
I should footnote as I say that, that these tapes, as, as the superintendent mentioned, are gonna be shown in many of the schools. We're working through the superintendent's round table to do that, and we're also gonna be doing some educational uh, opportunities with these in various uh, public events, like at the county fair. We're also going out on YouTube. We're using today's social media and high technology opportunities to get the word out. Um, so education is one element, and we talked about enhancements. Enhancements is, is what this county uh, has really been focused on for many, many years. That's capital improvements to make our roads safe. Certainly county roads, we believe, are, are you know, really at the, at the top of their game. That thanks to our engineering department and our road department, uh, we make sure that our roads are in good condition, our signage, lighting, all the enhancements to our county road network are in good order, and we certainly try to help our municipalities undertake the same initiatives as well. So we've covered education, we cover enhancement, and then in some respects, because at the end of the day, you can do all the education that you want, you can do all the enhancements that you can afford, but you still need very strong enforcement. Because we know that no matter how much you do education and how many enhancements you have, there are gonna be those people that are gonna still go out and drink and drive. There are gonna still be those people that are gonna drive distracted, cause injury, and cause death. Just the other day in the Star Ledger, there was an article about a 44-year-old uh, jogger in Connecticut who was killed by a young girl who was distracted, driving with her cell phone in her hand, and even her own father said it was the most foolish thing that could have happened. The numbers are pretty startling. The statistics are awful high. They say that 15 people a day are killed as a result of distracted driving. 15 a day in our country. That's from the Centers for Disease Control. 1,200 people injured every day from distracted driving. In 2009, more than 540 people were killed because of distracted driving. It is an issue out there. Drunk driving and distracted driving are, in some respects, our number one killer. So we need strong enforcement. Tonight, and apropos of the presentations that we're making tonight on the videos, we have with us um, an officer representing the East Brunswick Police Department. I'd like to ask Frank Sutter to come up and join me, please. Officer Sutter. Is that your lovely wife? Yes, it is. And could you ask her to join us? How old is your little one? Six months. <laughs> Layla. This is Layla. Officer Sutter is from our East Brunswick Police Department. I read an article the other day that uh, the officer had been um, presented a certificate at a state event for the l highest number of DWI arrests in Middlesex County. This officer, this brave officer, representing a fine police department, arrested 63 individuals, 63 drunk drivers, taking 63 potential threats off of our road, P 63 weapons off of our road. Because someone in a car driving drunk is no different than someone having a weapon. It could hurt, kill, and maim someone. So we really owe a debt of gratitude to the hard work of uh, this officer, Officer Sutter, to the East Brunswick Police Department, who I might say is really at the top of that list in many, many years. Uh, I've done a lot of work in that regard. And it is an important part of the, the three elements that we focus on in traffic safety. So on behalf of the uh, Board of Freeholders, officer, I want to present this to you. Um, and I will paraphrase that it represents to uh, Patrolman Frank Sutter, who made 63 DWI arrests in 2011, which was the most in Middlesex County, which added to the 30,000 arrests that were made statewide. Patrolman Sutter is a former United States Marine. He served in the East Brunswick Police Department since 2003 has been, been a member of the East Project Special Weapons and Tactics, Tactics Team since 2007. He received a Bachelor of Arts in Criminal Justice and Psychology, minor in Sociology from Rutgers, so he's one of our Rutgers boys, uh, and a Master of Arts in Human Resource Training and Development from Seton Hall University. Officer, on behalf of Middlesex County and all the residents of the county, I want to congratulate you for the final <laughs> that, if I may, I'd like to invite uh, up for this as well is uh, Lieutenant Frank Lasacco, who is here tonight representing East Brunswick Police Department. Department. He is the watch commander. He's also a councilman in Spotswood. And Lieutenant, if you'd like to say a few words before we take this photo and join us for that, we'd be honored. Sure. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank the freeholders for recognizing Frank 
Um, like uh, Freehold, the Freeholder just said, uh, I'm a watch commander on the midnight shift. I'm very fortunate enough to have Frank working for me. Um, and I got to tell you, uh, on a selfish note, uh, I was, I've done the recruiting for the agency for many years. Uh, Frank walked in and picked up an application when I was running a test. And I ran him through his written test, his physical test. I interviewed him, hired him, trained him in the academy. So I take full credit. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I got to tell you, he's made my job easy. He made me look good, and he does on a continual basis. So I congratulate him. He hasn't stopped, and I know he won't. And this is only going to make him go even harder. So uh, the roads are safer in East Brunswick and in Middlesex County because of the hard work of uh, uh, Patrolman Sutter and uh, many of the other officers that do work for us. So I congratulate him. I'd like to also congratulate uh, your wife, uh, Kaylin, and your daughter, Layla. Thank you for uh, allowing this fine gentleman to be on our streets each and every day, making our county that much safer. Congratulations. Thank to you. Uh, last item, Director, since I'll just finish my report. May 19th, we have our Household Hazardous Waste Day is at the North Brunswick Complex. For those of you who have anything at your home that you'd like to get rid of, pesticides, uh, paints, and other types of items, you're certainly welcome to bring them to our North Brunswick Complex on Apple Orchard Road on that day. Thank you very much. Director. Thank you for your order. Correspondence. Each freeholder has been provided with a list of correspondence received by the clerk's office since our last meeting. This correspondence will be kept on file in the office of the clerk of the board for reference. Need a motion to accept the correspondence? So moved. Second. Motion by Deputy Director Rio, seconded by Fielder Valente. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, we need to deviate from the regular order of business to consider an ordinance. Margaret. Notice of this public hearing was published in the Home News Tribune on May 7, 2012. This public hearing was authorized at a meeting of the Board of Chosen Freeholders held May 3, 2012. The clerk will read Ordinance Number 12-343E by title only. Bond Ordinance, Amending Bond Ordinance Number 343, Various 2003 Capital Improvements, heretofore finally adopted by the County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, on April 3, 2003, as amended and supplemented, to amend the description therein, authorizing the public hearing to be held on Thursday, May 17, 2012, at 7 p.m. and publication thereof. At this point in time, I'd like to open to the public consideration of Ordinance Number 12-343E. Anyone from the public have any comment on that particular ordinance only? Motion to close. Second. Motion by Deputy Director Rio, <coughs> seconded by Friola Valente. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Need a, a motion to adopt ordinance number 12-343E on final reading. So moved. Second. Motion by Deputy Director Rio, seconded by Freeholder Valente. Roll call. Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Rios? Yes. Freeholder Tamaro? Yes. Freeholder Valente? Yes. Freeholder Director Rafano? Yes. Need a motion to resume the regular order of business? So moved. Second. Motion by De Deputy Director Rio, seconded by Freeholder Valente. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. We're done.
Go enjoy your uh, concert. Thank you. Deputy Director Ron Rios, report. Thank you, Director. <laughs> Tonight, I'm very pleased to unveil an initiative that will give back to the men and women who have put themselves into harm's way to protect all our freedom. In working very closely with and with the strong support of my freeholder colleague, Blanquita Valente, I am leading an effort to establish the Veterans Outreach Program. The goal is to connect veterans with needed service, including finding employment and training, education opportunities, transportation, and housing. As a first step, representatives from our Department of Community Services will be setting up information tables at our local shopping malls. I wish to thank the management of the Brunswick Square Mall, Menlo Park, and Woodbridge Center Malls for their assistance in this effort. One other component of our endeavor is the Middlesex, Veterans, Middlesex County Veterans Housing Assistance Program, a workable, sustainable plan that will prevent and end homelessness for our military veterans. While federal dollars exist to help veterans with rental assistance, there are not enough resources to help everyone who may be eligible. Our program will help fill the unmet need. To jumpstart this effort, we are setting aside funding to assist veterans at risk of homelessness by providing help in paying rental arrears, security deposits for apartments, temporary rental assistance, and help in finding suitable housing, assessing other resources, and conducting ongoing evaluations. The assistance will be based on the individual needs of the veterans and his or her family. Before I turn the meeting over to Peg Chester, head of our Community Services Department, to detail the challenges our veterans face and our plans to help them, I wish to sincerely thank Freeholder Valenti and her staff in the Community Services Department. You have been at the forefront of providing needed services for all our residents <laughs> and in ending homelessness in Middlesex County. I'm happy to be working with you on what I believe will be a successful program that will help our nation's absolute true heroes. Peg, would you please come up? And I'd like to also mention that there's been a lot of work involved in this, and it's been a long time that we've been working on it, but I'd like to recognize Peg Chester and her staff, John Polamine, our administrator, and again, kudos to our, my freeholder colleague, uh, Valenti, for supporting on this uh, initiative. Peg? Thank you, Freeholder Rios and Freeholder Valenti for your support in this endeavor. And I must also thank uh, my staff, Tom Selheimer, our Veterans Service Coordinator, Doug Breen, and Melissa Bellamy from our housing office for all of their hard work on this initiative. Well, Middlesex County is home to over 36,000 veterans, um, and we are among the top three counties in the state in terms of veteran residents. And as you can see by the breakdown on our charts, um, that is a broad range of age groups. Um, you can see that there's a predominance of um, veterans between the ages of 65 and 84, but that's primarily because we are also the second largest county in New Jersey in terms of senior set, uh, citizens over the age of 60. So this initiative is going to um, cross all age groups. Um, as you can see, we also have 1,500 of our 36,000 veterans are women. We recently had our veterans coordinate, uh, veteran service coordinator meet with different uh, veterans groups to talk about what they feel are challenges and critical needs for veterans um, in our community. And it was almost unanimous that education about benefits and services was the number one need uh, for all veterans. There are a lot of different uh, services out there for them, um, but they're not always well advertised. And so being able to get to those benefits, the access, the referral to them is key. 
Um, we also heard that unemployment and loss of income is a major problem. A lot of our veterans coming back from overseas now are coming home to no jobs. They're also coming home to the fact that they are losing their homes or they can't afford their homes because they're coming back to ha and having to take lower paying jobs. Uh, the U.S. Veterans uh, Administration has estimated that there's over 8,300 homeless veterans in New Jersey alone. So that is a crisis among people who are serving our country. Mental health issues is another uh, major category that the veterans felt was critical. Uh, anxi anxiety disorders, traumatic brain injuries, suicide is elevated among this group as well as alcohol and drug use and that is um, verified in a number of different articles that we researched. Today I wanted to talk about the umbrella of services that Middlesex County is already providing and will be providing with our new initiatives. Um, we call it uh, McVets, which is Middlesex County Connecting Veterans to Services. And the workforce and education component, we work in coordination with a number of different entities. In Middlesex <coughs> County, there are um, employment offices in New Brunswick and Perth Amboy with specific veterans officers working uh, with that population. Um, our Work First group also does training classes. They are not predominantly just for um, veterans, but there are a number of veterans who participate and certainly we encourage our veterans to um, get involved in those kind of training programs. Middlesex County College uh, has really been promoting along with Rutgers the GI Bill um, that is the 9-11 um, programs and so they have been promoting classes so that the veterans can participate um, with help for their tuition. <coughs> In terms of information and outreach, we currently have a veteran service coordinator here at the county administration building who works with all of the veterans organizations across the county. He also works with state and federal uh, entities. I'm going to be talking about the new initiative uh, to make it more accessible and easier for our veterans to get the information that they need without having to come into New Brunswick. We also have invested in bricks and mortar, the actual building of facilities to help homeless veterans. The county uh, funded $750,000 to a facility in Highland Park, which is now um, used for homeless veterans to kind of get back on their feet, have, have a roof over their heads. Carteret, we've also supported $352,000 uh, towards a program there which is again recruiting and finding individuals who are homeless um, who are veterans. In New Brunswick we funded uh, $300,000 towards a homeless um, shelter uh, program which is not specific to veterans but veterans have frequented that program as well. Other services that the county provides right now are free ID cards through the county clerk, uh, we have developed special transit routes to Lyons and Piscataway for our veterans to get uh, medical assistance. We have uh, the Memorial Day wreaths and we also have burial markers. And just yesterday, no actually it was Monday and Tuesday, our veteran service coordinator was at the fire academy distributing uh, the wreaths and the markers for our veterans groups to be able to put them on the grave sites this coming Memorial Day. Our new Preventing Homelessness Initiative, uh, we are putting $100,000 from the Homelessness Trust Fund into that. And let me just tell you a little bit about the Homeless Trust Fund. In 2009, the, the state passed enabling legislation that allowed the counties to develop uh, ways in which to set aside money for the Homeless Trust Fund. In 2010, our freeholders passed a resolution that did that, enabling the county clerk to, to charge $3 a transaction, and that money would be dedicated to preventing homelessness. In 2011, we utilized $300,000 of the money collected to support five different programs 
for that explicit um, purpose. And so in 2012, with the funding coming in, we will be earmarking $100,000 of that to be used specifically for veterans. As the freeholder mentioned, we are spreading our outreach services and making ourselves more accessible. We have determined that we will go to the three major malls in the county. Um, it is a place where veterans might more often frequent, um, and it is a lot more accessible to them than possibly coming into the city um, to meet with our officer. Our veterans officer will be at those locations um, during the time that we are there. And our schedule is really a rotating schedule so that each month uh, he and um, we're working also with our uh, veterans employment uh, officers to be able to be there on Friday. So if people need assistance specifically with uh, employment, they also will be able to get that. But on a Friday and a Saturday each month at rotating malls, there will be this service available. And you can see the dates so that um, people from all parts of the county will be able to get to those locations in an easy way. We are also working on the new homeless uh, initiative and we're really um, looking to prevent homelessness as much as possible. Um, it, it's important to get people before they really get out of a home, before they lose their home, before they're put out on the street. So we will be working with both populations, people about to lose their homes or about to uh, lose their rental um, homes and also those that um, are already on the street. We will be working with uh, providing rental arrears, uh, security deposits, and let me just say with the security deposits, we'll be working with a new national program called VASH that program is a new initiative by the Veterans Administration that is providing rental help uh, monthly to pay people's rents who are veterans. They do not provide security deposits. So while there's the money for a veteran to get the money or the help each month, if they don't have the security deposit to put down, they can't get into the rental unit and so therefore they don't qualify to get the help. So we're going to be partnering in that way to really help those people get the, the assistance that they need. We'll be, be providing temporary rental assistance and we'll also be providing care management. A lot of times um, people will call in, get the information that they need. Some of them are able to take that information and run with it. They can go out, they can make the contacts on their own. Other people are in situations where they're not able to connect all of the dots. And so our care management um, assistance will be available to them to make that contact for them, help them get to where they need to be. And so my last slide indicates something that the military teaches, and that is never leave a man behind. And so it's a motto lived on the battlefield and one that Middlesex County intends to continue following here with a defined strategy that allows us to be proactive and shape the battlefield in our county in an approach to assist county veterans. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to leave the um, schedule of the mall uh, outreach activities up here so if anyone is interested, they can come up and get a copy. Thank you, Peg, for a very good uh, detailed presentation. And I think it's important that we make sure that we get the word out there and, and focus on encouraging our veterans to be aware of this new initiative because uh, they've been able to do so much for us. And I think it's only fair that we try to help them. And that uh, concludes my report for this evening. Director. Thank you, Deputy Director. Thank you. Freeholder Charlie Tamara. Thank you, Director. Um, first, I want to um, congratulate and thank the, uh, your committee and Blanquita's committee for working to, to move these veterans outreach services forward. Um, you know, anything to do, anything we can do for our veterans, especially to help those who are homeless. You know, the state of New Jersey is looking at all those COLA dollars 
to take and put into their budgets. Uh, those COLA dollars would be great to help the homeless and build in homes for them. So hopefully we can push that forward to make that happen. Um, today, Middlesex County College had a uh, graduation commencement, and over 1,400 students graduated from the college, so we'd like to congratulate them and wish them well in their future endeavors. Um, the Cultural and Heritage Commission at the East Old New Jersey Village, Old Town Village on 1050 East River Road in Piscataway, the May um, uh, exhibits will be demonstrations of uh, ancient art of blacksmithing with Robert Bose creating the iron strap hinges. Uh, registration is free. That's this. Uh, it's May 29th, so it's in a couple weeks. Registration is free. The program uh, by calling the Cultural and Heritage Commission at 732-745-4489. And also, uh, May 23rd, which is Wednesday, at 6 p.m., the History Grants Workshop at East Jersey Old Town Village, also at 1050 East River Road, Piscataway. Uh, it's a workshop uh, open to organizations in interested in applying for projects taking place in the, uh, from July 2012 to 2013. So this is a great great for those uh, historic sites that are looking for dollars to help them. Um, also, there will be an American dance by um, Louis Mulsey, the, the Lodge, the American Indian Center at Thompson Park at 1701 Primeville Road in Jamesburg, Monroe on Saturday, June 2nd, 2012, uh, performing multicultural tribal dances from different Indian tribes um, that they'll be uh, performing, uh, weather permitting outdoor performances, bringing long chairs and blankets. Uh, registration is free. You can call the program by at 732-745-4489. Uh, and I also like to comment about the um, Arvo Tech School. There is a welding class for the last four or five years that has been working on a bald eagle, uh, all made out of steel. This structure uh, stands over 15 feet tall, uh, has a wingspan of 16 feet, weighs almost four tons, um, and it kind of outgrew uh, where they were storing it. So by the help of Assemblyman Patrick Digan, and you can see, you can see I don't know if you can see the eagle, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's going to, they found a home for it, and the home will be at the Menlo Park Veterans Home. The next problem is getting it there. <laughs> so if anybody has a big truck with a crane, <laughs> they can help them get it there. But this is all, and I, and I, in fact, I know the welding teacher that, uh, that put, helped put this together, and they did an awesome job. So if you ever get a chance to visit our, our home in Menlo Park in Edison, New Jersey, and see this eagle, it's going to be awesome. Thank you, Director. That's the end of my report. Thank you, Freeholder. Hilder Blanquita Valente. Uh, thank you, for Hilder, Director. Uh, today I attended the graduation of Middlesex County College. Uh, there were at least five of us there, five freeholders present, and it was really very touching to see that many students come up from all walks of life and all ages, so it was very inspiring. And uh, even though we had a young lady that walked up in her bare feet, she still got her diploma. <laughs> and there was another one, but we, we won't, won't talk about. We that. won't mention him. <laughs> um, nevertheless, I wanted to uh, touch on what Peg was saying about the Veterans Outreach Services, and this goes on through November, uh, every month, uh, be, be, be beyond July 20th and 21st, August 17th, 18th at Brunswick Square Mall. September 14 and 15 at Woodbridge Center, Night, October 19 and 20, Menlo Park Mall, November 2nd and 3rd, Woodbridge Center Mall, and finally November 16 and 17 at Brunswick Square Mall. The, um, from the office of the surrogate, Kevin Hoagland, he recently received the Russ Burney Award for Making a Difference, which honors Garden State residents for their unselfish dedication to serving others in the state. And after forming the Central New Jersey Spinal Cord Association in 1987, Kevin has continued to support the organization and help raise awareness and funds to find a cure for paralysis from spinal cord injuries. So we wish him a lot of luck. From the Office of Aging and Disabled <coughs> Services, May is Older Americans Month, and this year's theme is Never Too Old to Play. 
The county celebrates Older Americans Month actually by holding three events honoring county residents over 90 years of age. More than 325 seniors and their guests attended the events held in Edison, Old Bridge, and in South Brunswick. And the last one was uh, this past week in South Brunswick, and I couldn't believe what I was talking to folks that were 103, 104. I just want to know what kind of vitamins they take because they were, you know, all their cookies were in one piece and they were mobile. They were not on wheelchairs. Um, I also attended the Fire Academy where the veterans were giving out United States flags and grave markers uh, two days this week. And let me tell you, the weather was terrible. It was pouring. It did not stop the veterans from coming. And they came in droves, and we gave out quite a few flags that day. So it was very inspiring to see that. From the Office of Transportation on Monday uh, this week, May 14th, I attended the kickoff event for the newly developed New Jersey Transit bus route that will operate between Princeton and Plainsboro, going to the University Medical Center of Princeton at Plainsboro campus when it officially opens later this month. Our Office of Transportation has also expanded it, its MC6 route to assist more county residents from across South County needing to travel to the medical center in Plainsboro. I would like to thank Freeholder Rios for his ongoing interest in veterans issues and for working with me to help move our new veterans initiatives forward. Concerning the Princeton University Medical Center, uh, uh, Freeholder Rios and I attended the, the, um, the cutting of the ribbon and it's quite a facility. It's absolutely beautiful. I believe it has as many rooms as the old facility in Princeton proper. However, I understand that all the rooms will be private. There will be only one occupant. Um, it's quite a place and I was very pleased to be there. And I think that's the end of my report. Thank you, Freeholder. Mr. Kelso? Resolutions to be added? Yes, uh, for the director, we have one resolution for addition, uh, which would be number 0974, and that is a resolution determining the form and other details of the offering of $8,500,000 County College Bond Series 2012, County College <coughs> Bond Act 1971, New Jersey Laws Chapter 12 as amended, of the County Middlesex State of New Jersey and providing for the sale of such bonds and determining certain matters with respect to the sale and issuance of $2,281,000 bond anticipation notes. Need a motion to add that to the agenda? So motion. moved. Second. Motion by Deputy Director Rios, seconded by Freeholder Valente. Roll call, please. Freeholder Rios? Yes. Freeholder Tamaro? Yes. Freeholder Valente? Yes. Freeholder Director Rafano? Yes. Any resolutions to be amended? There are none. Resolutions to be held? There are none. Resolutions to be voided? There are none. At this point in time, I'd like to open to the public the meeting uh, to comment on any of the resolutions on the agenda. Public comment on any of the resolutions on the agenda. Motion to close. Second. Motion by Deputy <coughs> Director Rio, seconded by Fielder Valente. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Does any fielder have any items to be voted on separately? Director, I don't have an item to pull, but I'd just like to comment on, on page 10, uh, resolution 12-09903, and it has to do with Woodbridge and Gurley Avenue and, and, and um, Trenton, uh, a light that's been long overdue, and I know we're getting to the final stages, and I, I know pretty soon the engineering department will go out to bid on this, and I want to thank them for, you know, for uh, moving this forward and, and getting this done, because it took a long time, and yes. I want to thank them. Okay. That's thank all for you, sir. Director. Thank you. <clears throat> I have one. That's resolution 12 0909. <clears throat> okay, I need a motion. No. Mr. Kelsey. So moved. Second. No. no. Mo oh, motion I'm sorry. on the consent agenda. <laughs> uh, yes, field the director, a motion would then be in order to adopt the consent agenda <clears throat> consisting of resolution numbers 12 0869 through 12 0974, excluding resolution 0909 to be voted upon separately. Any motion? So moved. Second. Motion by Deputy Director Rio, seconded by Fielder Valente. Roll call. 
Freeholder Rios? Yes. Freeholder Tamaro? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Director Rafano? Yes. <laughs> Uh, and now, Director, it would be appropriate to consider the resolution which was excluded, and that's 12 0909. I need a motion. So moved. I need a second. Second. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Motion by Deputy Director Rio, second by Freeholder Tamaro. <laughs> Roll call. Freeholder Rios? Yes. Freeholder Tamaro? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Director Rafano? Present, not voting. At this point in time, I'd like to open the meeting up to the public on any item. Any public comment on any item? <laughs> yes, ma'am. There's a five minute rule, and we need you to, to tell us your name and address. Yes. Hi, my name is Susan Gamolka from 5 Squire Street in East Brunswick, New Jersey. We're here to discuss a county park, Keystone Park in East Brunswick, New Jersey. We're proposing um, a request for a land grant acquisition through County Green Acres. And for more details, I will give another resident of Squire Street, uh, Karen Scott. I have to ask you, where's Squire Street? I live in South River, so I'm really close to East Brunswick. Where's Squire Street? That's the Forgotten Suite. Um, Historic District. Yeah. Uh, 516 Main Street. Make a right on Main Street as you go down Oldbridge Turnpike. Make a left. Yeah, yeah. Emerson. Emerson. Yes. Yeah, yes. Squire Street was the best kept secret. I have a letter that I would read and then give it to you um, for your dear freeholder Rufano. We, the residents and homeowners of the seven properties on Squire Street, East Brunswick, New Jersey, petition the freeholders to strongly consider our street for a Green Acres land acquisition buyout to incorporate the land into the existing County Green Acres Park known as Keystone Park. The seven houses on Squire Street are flanked by the south branch of the Raritan River and Keystone Park. Squire Street, while in the National Flood Plan, had experienced minimal tiding flooding in the past, but over the past several years, the flooding is now exasperated by land development in upstream towns. Very little floodplain is left, and this has led to chronic erosion of the riverbanks. Most notably, Squire Street is a victim to major repetitive flooding when towns upstream, upstream have a release or failure of their dams or levees. Three dams are located upstream. Duhernal Dam, which is owned by DuPont, DeVoe Dam, which is owned and operated by the Borough of Spotswood, and the Thompson Park Dam, which is owned and operated by the County of Middlesex. In the past, a gentleman's agreement existed, which ensured the dams would not be open during high tides unless absolutely necessary. This agreement no longer exists. On March 17, 2010, these three dams were opened concurrently during high tide, and Squire Street residents witnessed an actual wave of water flowing down the river and directly into the street, sending six feet of water surging into the basements of most of the homes. On August 28, 2011, during Hurricane Irene, the water surged once again, albeit much more intensely causing severe flooding damage and total destruction of basements, as well as two to three feet of water destroying the first floors of the homes. While the water from the river was receding in South River and Saraville, it continued to rise on Squire Street. During both of these events, the township of East Brunswick was not made aware in advance <coughs> of the dam openings. After Hurricane Irene, it became clear that we no longer be able to safely remain on Squire Street, and on such, applications were submitted to the Blue Acres program for a potential buyout of our properties through the state. We subsequently received a response that the land could not be purchased through the state, says Keystone Park is a county Green Acres Park. It was then suggested that we pursue the op option of a buyout through the Middlesex County Green Acres program. We understand that the purchase may be possible through Middlesex County Green Acres with partial funding potential from East Brunswick Township FEMA funds. We also learned that East Brunswick Township can apply for a grant through the straight state for additional funds. We, the homeowners of Squire Street, are eager to pursue this option and seek assistance on how to formally request the county's consideration of the purchase of our homes. Any guidance you may provide would be greatly appreciated. We thank you for consideration and await your response. And it's signed all seven residents who 
okay. are willing to sell their homes. Okay. You can leave it with uh, <laughs> the clerk. Just to clarify one thing, Ralph, the Keystone Park is not a county park. It's not. No. It's a municipal park. Okay. It belongs to the East Park. That was purchased through Green Acres funds. Yes. Which mm -hmm. are state funds. Okay. Right. Um, the mayor, Mayor Stahl, would have been here with us tonight. However, he had a groundbreaking. He will be available for any questions or correspondence that you may have. Again, the rest of the residents are here, I'd like them to say. But it is the development um, upstream that is destroying our street. Um, I can handle tidal flooding. I can't handle a wave anymore coming down. Thank you. We'll, we'll get back to you. Okay. Anybody else in the public? Motion to close. Second. Motion by no. Deputy Director. No. Motion. Oh. Oh. Good evening, Director and Freeholder Body. Um, Salam Ismail, um, the National Director of United Youth Council Incorporated, 513 Richmond Street, based in Elizabeth, New Jersey. This is my, I believe, third time coming here and to ask you to, to, now when I first came here it was, and I introduced a uh, idea that we have been taking across the state, and that is to urge counties to declare violence a public health crisis. When I first came here it was only Union County. Now we have six counties that's on board. Two more counties are uh, Passaic and, some, uh, Passaic and Camden County. We're considering this Union, Essex, Mercer, Hudson, Monmouth, and Ocean counties have all declared violence a public health crisis. And in the process, as what Union County have already done, is to set up an advisory commission or advisory council or advisory board, whichever way they name it, to not only to research but also to to begin to start to collecting data to come up with a comprehensive response to the violence epidemic that we're saying is that's targeting 17 cities across the state. And Middlesex County is not exempt for Fanboy, Edison, Carteret, Highland Park, North Brunswick. Uh, we have representatives that's gonna is in the process of collecting data across the state. I would like an opportunity to also do a PowerPoint, which we will also share with you some of the data that we have not only gang violence or street violence or domestic violence, but also police violence and abuse. Middlesex County, uh, particularly New Brunswick, have uh, had a number of police violence, particularly the, the um, most controversial uh, with the Barry DeLoaf uh, shooting of New Brunswick police officer, which is still under, uh, hopefully be under view by the federal authorities. We ask you to, to, again, to reconsider and to really move forward on this and to declare violence in public health. And it's coincidentally, um, just recently, um, a gentleman, uh, Chang, uh, Asian gentleman, I believe he was, he was shot by a straight bullet. The bullet went into his second floor apartment here on, I think with the Birch, Birch Court and killed him. This man was not a gang member. He was not in the street. This straight bullet killed him. I understand one of your freeholders owned that property. Um, it's kind of, I don't know, I don't want to call it hypocritical, contradictory, or whatever, that you still want to stay on the sideline on declaring what this is. This is a real deep problem. And, um, and again, I would like the opportunity to also explain that. I'm going to tell you something else. There's some other interesting things that we're also checking into. And I had my lawyers to also look at possibility of some discriminatory practices of how the services, distribution of funds are in this county when it deals with specifically African Americans. So in the next couple of months, we will be putting together that part of it. If it need be, we'll be taking legal action against this county or what they have not done or not continue to do when it comes down to addressing the, ser the services of the African American population in this county and the fairness and the equity of it. So those are things we want to do. We don't want to go that route. We want to hope that we can partner with this county like we're partnering with counties across this state to impact on a 
diabolical problem that are affecting young people in particular, in regards to the black, white, but mostly a, a, a particular segment of the community that being affected by violence and being discriminately uh, affected by violence, and some in the hands of police. Uh, and lastly, I'll close by saying this, that, um, you know, we, we, we have to really, particularly here in New Brunswick, where there's not even a rec recreation center. In my, well, my hometown, Elizabeth, we have five recreational facilities, and it's a blue-collar town. It's not a wealthy town. And this is one of the most wealthiest counties and probably one of the wealthiest seats with Johnson & Johnson and, and all the other major corporations have a base here, and there's no recreation center in New Brunswick. That's a travesty. That's, that's sad. And there's no facility. I know because my son worked at the, what is called a center. He worked for the advocacy program. No, there's not a full-fledged recreation program. And we need that. We need to have that here Time. if you want to have an impact. Thank and, you, and, and I say that, you know, you, have, you guys have the responsibility. Thank you, Thank you. And stop being cocky. Anybody Stand else up for the kids if you, not anything else. Sir, for another innocent your time body, is up, sir. be murdered. Your time's up. Thank Anybody you. else in the public? Name and address, please. Uh, my name is Roger Daly, and uh, I should uh, at least uh, reveal uh, the fact that uh, I am now a candidate uh, for the uh, uh, freeholders uh, as a Republican candidate. And uh, actually, I didn't really come prepared to speak tonight, just really came prepared to uh, visit, uh, see some old friends, uh, and uh, see what's been going on over the last 16 years. But I uh, feel compelled to... Uh, uh, to respond to this gentleman whose name I don't really, I uh, can't, uh, um, is that that issue is really an important issue. I have just retired from the uh, from the judiciary after 14 years in the juvenile uh, court, and uh, actually probably wouldn't have retired if uh, I hadn't been moved out of the uh, juvenile court because of my criticism of the violence in the detention center. Uh, so. Uh, uh, I feel I feel that I should have to speak uh, forthrightly and say that what that gentleman's talking about is perfectly correct, and I would encourage the freeholders to step up and acknowledge the problems that exist, uh, not only in New Brunswick and and it's true we have the teen center, but uh, it's woefully inadequate, and there's uh, but there's tremendous uh, uh, violence in our streets. I was only trying to defend the children in the detention center from getting hurt. And I got removed from the, from the juvenile court for doing that. So uh, I think that the free should adopt the resolution. I followed this in the newspaper. And, I, and he, that man is right on point. And I think the free should get behind it. They should study the problem. You have an opportunity to do I see some of the good things that you've done tonight uh, with the DWIs and the different kinds of things. This is something that you should get behind and you should do because it's, it's desperately needed. So I thank that gentleman for his comments and uh, I encourage the freeholders to adopt that resolution, study this problem, and I look forward to the uh, next couple of months uh, to renew some old friendships and, uh, and speak with my freeholder colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, freeholder director, yeah. I just want to mention the fact that all the New Brunswick schools have after-school programs that are very well managed. And uh, the team center is used all the time. I, I speak to the fellow who's in charge, and they're very active there. So I, I'm sure there's other violence elsewhere, but not because we have, in New Brunswick, we haven't tried to curtail it. Thank you, Freeholder. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, Tom L. Pittman. Um, Address? 46 Byer Street. Okay, thank you. Um, I agree with the violence. This is probably my fifth time coming here addressing the issue of violence. And I'm sick and tired of coming here addressing things on the downside. You know, I see a lot of you guys' presentations in other schools, and it's excellent. You know, the county's, I'm not, the county's doing a good job with the school system, but specifically I can only speak for New Brunswick. There was a problem of violence. I go to the teen center. The teen center is only concerned with getting the young kids to sign that book and make sure that they were there. They could turn around and leave the door and run off in the streets and get killed. They don't monitor the kids. 
That's they don't. True. There's not a van riding around the community encouraging the kids to come there. They actually, when I go there, they're kicking the kids out. So the teen center, yes, yeah, there it's a place, but you have to visit that establishment. It's not. It's not doing anything for the children. And um, like I said, the Richard Chang situation. This is an innocent man that was sitting on his sitting on his toilet and was killed by a stray bullet. Now anybody here can detour to get away from traffic and try to take George's road and get killed. This shooting happened in a broad day. This wasn't a nighttime shooting. It happened broad day. And someone bugged me off and said, hey, yeah, you know what? A freeholder does own that property or have stake in that property. I don't, I said, I said, I don't, I can't say that. But I did go to the tenants meeting yesterday and James Polos was there, present, and explained to why there wasn't, the gate wasn't uh, operable at that time, why there wasn't enough lighting in that complex, why there wasn't enough uh, sh streets, lights, and all of this situation. So he presented the meeting. So I, I assume that he's the freeholder that has stock in that uh, uh, complex or whatever. That's neither here nor there. I, you know, I, but my thing is, we can't sit here and wait. We can't drag our feet. I elected, I gave up the next, every Saturday for the next six, mo six months in mentoring children. I take 12 children every Saturday, and I talk to them, and I teach them life skills, and I, and I ask them what's the concerns that they're facing, because they have no one else to talk to. I've been coming here every, every freeholders meeting. I don't want to be the guy that's, oh my God, he's getting up here. I don't, want to, I don't want to fight. I just want solutions. I want help. We need help. I don't want, I don't want anyone here to fear riding through certain parts of New Brunswick. Everyone should feel free to, they should be just as safe on George Street where that man was killed as they are down here. This is not about a fight. This is not about yelling. It's not about putting the freeholders on blast. It's about getting resolution. It's about coming to a solution. I'll sit down with any one of you guys. If you guys have a solution, if you think there's something that, that's being done that I'm not aware of in this city, let's just sit down. Let's figure out what we can do to stop this problem because everyone is in danger. I said this prior to Richard Chang being killed. Everyone is in danger. It's not a black or white issue. He was Asian. He was a contractor with a wife and kids. That's, that's, I'm just as absurd, I'm just as upset about that as I am with Barry DeLoach. I'm just as mad at the person that did that as I am with the Barry DeLoach situation. So we can't continue to turn our head on this situation. We gotta address it, we gotta address it because hopefully, I hope no one leave here and get hit with a stray bullet. Because I was, that person that did that shooting is not arrested. They, I, they, I don't even think they know who that person is, so they're capable of doing it again. And if they run into the person that they didn't agree with down here, do you think they're gonna say, no, I'm downtown, I'm not gonna shoot my gun? They're gonna shoot their gun anywhere. Anybody who shoots their gun in the broad daylight, don't, you think they're gonna say, I'm not gonna shoot it downtown? So this is dangerous for everyone. We want to address the situation, and we don't want people saying, hey, somebody did a shooting in broad daylight and got away with it. I can do it. We don't want that tone to even be set. Hey, look, they didn't catch anyone yet. So we do got to address this situation and consider this a public health crisis before another innocent person gets killed. That's all that we're asking. No more, no less. Thank you. Anybody else in the public? Hi. Hi, my name is Carmen Logue. I live on 6 Squire Street in East Brunswick, and there's something I really need to address, and it's the emotional part. I don't know if in five years after we flooded year after year, if my home's still going to be standing, if I'm going to be 60 years old and homeless. If I was your mother, what would you do for me? And that's, I mean, basically there are four women on that street, and we have nobody to help us out, only you. We're coming to you because there is nobody else to help us. We don't want anything more than to be able to feel safe in our homes. And we can't do that anymore. When it rains, I'm scared to death that my home is going to flood. And when it does again, I, I've lost everything the first time around. I can't afford to lose everything again. It's very hard. It's, it's very emotional. I'm sorry I, I'm okay. crying, but... It is. I'm scared every day. And I, I don't want to feel that way anymore. 
and I know that it's a strain on East Brunswick to do this for us, but it's a big strain on us every single day. Come and see our homes. They're not the same anymore. Come and see our street. We were a family at one time, and now we're just sad. And I really hope that you'll do something for us. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. Hi, my name is Barbara Keegan. I'm also a resident of Squire Street. I'm number four, Squire Street. I want to thank you for taking the time for listening to listen to us. This has been a very difficult and very emotional situation for all of us. Um, unprecedented and we really would appreciate any help that you can give us because we have turned, as um, you noticed in the, in the letter, to several different options and have been pushed back and pushed back and pushed back and we're told now that you may be able to help us get the help that we need. We clearly need to be bought out. We were even told by Mayor Stoll, it's not safe for us to stay there anymore. Um, we live in constant fear and constant threat. Our homes are barely habitable because it doesn't make sense to repair them completely at this point, to risk them just be damaged again. And uh, thank you very much for anything you can do for us. We truly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Nancy Appleby von Spreckelson. Uh, if anybody knows anything about the historic district in East Brunswick, my ancestors settled back there in the 1800s. So the town, the area means a lot to me. But on the same token, having been raised in Five Squire Street, in 1936 I was born in 68 years, never, ever saw the water come up the way it did. To see it running across Emerson Street, across the old Matawan Road, and into the woods, my front steps on my house wound up in the woods, along with many other things. So having been, I moved back home <coughs> In 1971, my parents were still at Five Squire Street. I had no fear, but today I have a lot of fear. My two-story, two-car garage now sits on a pitch because the water made a moat around the one side and across the front. At this point, I the garage is in great shape. There is no cracks in it or anything else. But on the same token, if we get another storm, is it going to take it down or is it going to keep it there? And never, ever had 12 inches of water in my first floor. Had it in the basement, I could deal with that. I am not interested in leaving, but on this point, it is time that something has got to be done because of all the water that comes from 33 through Jamesburg and down through us. And we are tidal water. That end of Duhernal into South River and Saraville is tidal water. And it was the lunar tide that came in that day along with the storm. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in the public? Yes, sir. Good evening, Freeholders. Uh, my name is Tyrone Brunson. I represent Skaters United for Fitter Youth Organization based in Middletown, New York. Um, and I'm just basically here to uh, act or speak to you guys with regard to um, the, um, uh, the criteria as far as um, uh, Salam Ishmael and his uh, uh, agenda as far as uh, <clears throat> excuse me the uh, uh, violence being declared a health health crisis. Um, I I as I pace the floor and I say to myself, what can I say to you guys? And um, excuse me, um, young lady as well. Um, what can 
actually, you, you look kind of comfortable, very comfortable. Um, but it's, it seems like it's time. It's your 9-11 right now. Because um, uh, when you open up your meetings, you salute the flag. And you also make a prayer. I'm a born-again Christian, and I believe that there, there is some, some merits and some principles here that, you know, you, some guidelines that says, hey, listen, somebody ought to listen to somebody. But your, your, your seats need to be heated right about now, only due to the fact that it needs to touch you. And no, no one, and I can't say this more profoundly than myself, that until it reaches prophetically your own home, until it reaches into your own living room, until it reaches you per se, like, I mean, these young ladies are coming to you and saying, hey, listen, my home. And I don't even live in New Brunswick, but I feel for them. Why am I here? That's because the youth are being plagued by violence. All I'm asking is some to 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 somebody to listen, because he sounds like he got it going on as far as statistics is concerned. On the way here, basically, I I tapped into my computer, and it just says that. Um, New Brunswick is under some sort of surge of new violence. But since 2009, it seems as though you guys have been experiencing a lot and a lot and a lot more violence. <coughs> and how can a, a, um, a city or a county that just held a ceremony for a police officer who celebrated uh, making 63 arrests and that was just for alcoholism or distraction while driving. How can he, you celebrate that, and then not want to listen to somebody who's crying in the, in, in the wind saying, hey, help the youth. How can you not listen? Every time I come here, and I, I please, please forgive me, you have something that, that um, a presentation with regard to the arts, which I'm a part of as well. And it, and it deals with the youth. And the youth that you leave, when you're no longer here, somebody is coming behind you, it's going to be youthful. And they're going to basically want your seat. All I'm saying to you to this end is listen to what these guys are saying. Because of the mere fact that sooner or later, it's going to say that if six counties have adopted this resolution, and there's only 21 counties, I do believe, in New Jersey. That's only the, the start of this, this ball. If we're here looking at, as far as the youth is concerned, and you, you're, what's your name, by the way, I'm sorry? Council Raleigh Tamaro. Um, Council, I mean, I'm sorry, Freeholder Tamaro. I, I, I ask you, first of all, because of your, your involvement with the youth, and the young lady as well, because of your involvement with the, the, the youth centers and things of that nature, that you listen to what Salam Ismail is actually saying. Because it's not, we're not here for ourselves. I'm 51, all I'm here is basically saying, hey listen, there is, my daughter's 18 years of age, and she hasn't been rinsed in the system. She's not a, a, a violent individual. At seven, and. Uh, 7 o'clock you guys normally terminate your business and say hey listen let's go home but this is a problem you have to take home with you you have to you have to listen it's a passionate plea not for ourselves because we gain nothing but as far as a statewide Time. initiative thank you sir Thanks. thank you thank you for listening you're welcome anybody else in the public mm -hmm. Mr. Stewart for me to get up and I just have a quick question for you. Sure. Can you tell me what is the proper move to beat the Lena? I'll, I'll talk to you about it after the meeting, okay? Okay. Fair enough. Because I think I wasn't here last time. Okay. I'll talk to you. Anybody else in the public? Motion to close. 
Second. Motion by Deputy Director Rios. Second by Fiola Valente. All those in favor say aye. 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 I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion by Deputy Director Rios. Seconded by Fiola Valente. All those in favor say aye. Meeting adjourned.